one more thank you so much for having us kbvr tv we are breezy the bin y'all rock thank you thank you thank you we'll see you next time
WKBVR. We are Breeze of the Band. We'll see y'all next time. Ciao. Hasta luego. No coaches. We are Hello and welcome to Locals Live. Today we are joined by Breezy and we've got Leo, Will, Nick and Jay. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started? Yeah, so um, Breezy kind of started as this loose project between uh, Jay and myself. Um, Jay and I used to play in bands uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, we were both drummers at the time and we, our bands played a lot of shows together and we got to chatting after the show. And, we realized that we had a lot in common uh, music-wise. Uh, I was uh, visiting my folks and Jay texted me up one day and he's like, hey man, do you want to play uh, drums on my record? I'm, I'm looking to record. And I was like, yeah. So when I got back into town, uh, we started kind of jamming, getting together, working some songs. Uh, we trade off a lot. I'd play some guitar, he played drums. Yeah. Uh, he'd play guitar, I'd play drums. Uh, and we did that for a few years uh, until eventually uh, Jay actually uh, met Leo uh, they met through, they're both avid fishermen, um, and they met through uh, fishing one day, and I'll let Leo kind of talk about that story. Yeah, uh, uh, one day on the river, I was, it was 2019, I was chasing after steelhead, which is a very hard fish to, to go after. I started in January 2019, and uh, I finally caught one in March of 2019, and I was super ecstatic, and I run into this guy as I'm walking back to my car, and it was Jay. Uh, and then two days later, I posted that picture on like a fishing forum, he hit me up, he started cyber stalking me, and mm -hmm. then, uh, Jay, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, I, uh, I was playing guitar with Nick, and, and uh, I've never really enjoyed being the front man or doing that in a band, and I listened to Leo's band online, I saw his post, and I saw he posted something about music, and I listened to his band online, it was incredible, and I was like, Leo, like, let's try, I told Nick, let's try to, try to get this guy to come and play some music with us and see what's up, and Leo seemed interested in coming and play, and, uh, Next thing, yeah. we Next got thing together we and it kind of clicked. Yeah, mm -hmm. Leo came over with his uh, brother Nick, who's a guitar player, uh, and we started playing together in 2019. Uh, we played for a little while, uh, wrote a bunch of songs, uh, then we took a little bit of a break and got back together to do some recording uh, before Nick had to move back down to California, where Leo's from. Uh, so we recorded, I don't know, about four or five songs, and then uh, started posting those songs out, and uh, we were getting some shows. Uh, we got a couple people to fill in for Nick after he moved out, um, but it didn't end up uh, being anything permanent until uh, we met Will, and uh, Leo and Will actually worked together. That's how they ended up meeting each other. Then I learned a bunch of songs, and then they can't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> as much as we Thankfully. Try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would you say your biggest musical influences are? Let's start with Jay. Uh, yeah, I would say uh, just growing up in New Orleans, a uh, lot of jazz music, a lot of rock music. I kind of grew up playing punk rock and a uh, lot of you know math rock in the late '90s, early 2000s. You know, that would be about, about it. Yeah, and um, I grew up uh, kind of always loving jazz. Just wanted to play jazz drums, and then I got into like rock music, like uh, Black Sabbath and you know, Beatles and, um, you know, more modern stuff like Jay was saying, we were both into kind of math rock and angular rock, uh, you know, like the aggressiveness and, and DIY, nature, DIY nature of like Fugazi, but also kind of the pop melodic stuff of like Wilco, just somewhere all over the spectrum on that. Uh, lots of jazz for me. As, once I found jazz and like in piano lessons growing up, going from classical music, the first song that had a walking bass line. I was like, I don't care about counterpoint. I want to play that. <laughs> and uh, that just ruined me. <laughs> yeah, for me, I grew up in Southern California in a town called Corona. We didn't have a lot to do. Uh, we had an all-ages venue called the Showcase Theater where a lot of bands uh, came through. So I grew up around like a punk hardcore. Um, my parents are both immigrants uh, from South America and the Philippines. So a lot of their kind of musical heritage and traditions were instilled in my brother and I, specifically like Latin music. Um, and that really kind of informs uh, where we are and how we write and our style. Cool, how do you approach the songwriting process either as a group or individually? Uh, so we kind of, 
kind of do really a mix of both. Uh, sometimes we'll just get together as a group. Um, like sometimes Jay will just start playing something on the bass and we'll start listening to it and kind of building around it. And uh, we've written songs uh, like the song Lemonade that we're gonna release a, a music video on here in a couple months. Uh, was written kind of that way, starting off with Jay on bass. And then sometimes we'll get demos from Leo, like Pale Horse came through, it's like a phone demo from Leo. And then we all just got in the room together, uh, Leo would start playing and we just kind of build off of it and that song came together pretty quick despite the fact that it wasn't really like a, a broad vision to it. Yeah, our, our songwriting is very rooted in kind of like conversational jamming. Um, there's no expectations, it's very organic. Uh, we don't put any kind of like structure around it uh, while the song is kind of being baked. Um, Everybody brings in their, like if we're making cookies, right? Every, he's bringing chocolate chips, I'm bringing yes. the, the eggs, he's bringing the flowers, he's bringing them. And, uh, and the end product of that is kind of like an amalgam of like all of our different like musical styles and pasts and histories. Um, so our songwriting process is very, um, I don't want to say abstract because like, I mean, we still use the traditional band method, but like very conversational. <laughs> Two, five, one. <laughs> so that's how we play. I'm the butter in the cookies. Yeah, he is the butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is from the South. So. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, you though. Yeah. So how has the Portland music scene influenced you? Well, it's just open. Like, it, it's very, very similar to how we write songs. It's a conversation with a bunch of friends. Um, it shows are very collaborative instead of kind of how do we make our mark and kind of show everyone we're better than the rest of these groups. It's very like, hey, my band's playing this show. Do you want to come sit in on these two songs? When in music scenes outside of this area, it's very like, oh, why would why would you pull someone outside of your band up on the stage with you? You're taking away from your spotlight. <laughs> and here it's just, yeah, let's do this together. And it's a giant community of musicians who work with like the local radio stations, who play local bands and everything. So it's a, a very community-based, built environment that's striving to bring arts to the city versus how do I individually become famous in this area? It's definitely collaborative for sure. Jay grew up, uh, I think out of all of us, has been in the music scene in Portland the longest. Um, and he's seen di different iterations of it from like the late 90s, the 2000s. Um, so he, he knows, uh, I would say, the best out of all of us what the Portland music scene is in that collaborative community sense. Well, it's, it's nice because it's like, it's not genre locking, right? Mm -hmm. So many bands can kind of play to, with each other and not have that same kind of you know, like it's very, like he says, very free. It's always, it's, it's always kind of yeah. been that way. And uh, just a lot of opportunity for playing shows and getting shows, so. Yeah, and one of the things I noticed uh, looking at your band is that uh, on your social media, media <laughs> you use uh, a lot of memes and fun content. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. <laughs> we, we look at social media as uh, not taking it very seriously. I mean, we are all like, this band, first and foremost, is our friendship. And we have been doing this music thing for a long time. And we know what our limitations are of like, as far as like, a, you know, commercial viability. And that kind of went out the door when we realized like, if we want any kind of longevity in playing music with friends, you gotta put those aspirations and focus more so on the art of it. So the reflection of that in social media, like social media is like, shouldn't be taken seriously or it's not real. Um, so we kind of use that as like, you know, making fun of ourselves and having that conversation with like any potential listeners or people that want to engage and be like, hey, this is all a joke. And we're here like what's real is like if you go to a show and you see a band, you connect with them and you're in that audience. That's what's real. All this other stuff is just fluff and just kind of like, you know, likes and, and you know, pixels on a, on a screen. <laughs> so all of those memes and video ideas are just kind of like conversations we've had or like struggles that musicians have like gone through and like local, like we're a local band, so local bands. Inside uh, jokes. Inside yeah. jokes. Uh, yeah. One of the memes that we posted earlier this year was like, uh, uh, you're, you're the second band on and you see the first band loading out um, <laughs> while you're playing. And one of the guys comes up to you afterwards and says six set, but they were outside smoking the whole time. So. <laughs> Like just little kind of like quirky tropes that I would, you know, people within, it's very niche uh, and it's probably not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you share any upcoming projects or performances you have going on? Yeah, so um, we've got a um, potential show coming up in June, June 23rd, I think is what it was. 
uh, Misdemeanor Meadows in Portland. And then we have uh, July, we're doing Tiger Music Festival. That's July 14th. July 14th, yeah. yeah. And then we also have some tracks that we've got ready. They're going to go into mastering. We're going to release uh, a couple singles coming out soon. And then we've got a music video, like I said, coming up on the horizon in a couple months. Yeah. And we're also, they, these guys helped me put on the El Tigre Festival, which is a Latin, Latino music festival that we did in Tigard. Um, we didn't play it, um, but we, they, they were big help in putting it on last year, and we're doing it again this year, so. That's very cool, yeah. Um, so now we've got the last question, which is the big one. Uh, <laughs> if Breezy was an ice cream flavor, what would it be? This is hard. <laughs> Uh, I think Jay had the best answer for this. Jay yeah. said Napolitan. Napoli I said <laughs> Neapolitan. 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 There Napoli we go. I was thinking Napoleon, Napolitan. Napoleon. <laughs> Napoleonic. Um, but I switched. But he switched it, yeah. yeah. Jalapeno vanilla. Jalapeno <laughs> vanilla. Because it's, uh, it's creamy and everybody likes it, but there's also a little bit of white, white, with, white with some spice. With picante. Yeah. 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 We trademarked that too. Yeah, it's our absolutely. Yeah. It's our new ice cream. We should talk to Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> They will see a sales dip for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Bank, bankrupt. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on Locals Live today. Uh, yeah. We really appreciate you coming in today. Yeah, thank you so thanks much. Thanks for having us. Thanks for, having yeah. us. Thanks for, yeah. thanks for tuning in. <laughs>